we are going to do a ilyostomy reversal this is a loop ilyostomy which we had done about 3 months back the 80 years old gentleman underwent a robotic uh, lar and uh, covering ilyostomy ilyostomy as a protocol we always make it because it's the price is too much if there's a leak at the anastomosis not that it reduces the anastomotic leak but it definitely averts a lot of morbidity if in case there is a you know leak so we've done a, a loop ileostomy we standard do a loop ileostomy always and uh, i wanted to just uh, demonstrate how i in our center how i close uh, or reverse an ileostomy make an incision uh, just around the ileostomy as close as possible and extend it about a centimeter this side extend centimeter that side now this is going to become a dog ear so it's better to make an incision like that so this uh, incision i am going to deepen with the diathermy because it's going to be a slightly bloody area so as i uh, proceed i i'll demonstrate it This is a practically a bloodless incision. You see, if there's a good traction and counter traction, identification of tissues becomes much easier. And as I deepen the incision, I'm going to bear the bubble wall and the parietes in which the stoma has been made. As we're deepening, we're opening and the vision the scarpas and just after this we should be able to see the parietes it's always better to mm, deepen the uh, incision initially on the sides because it's easier to mm, see the virgin tissues you know and then mm, gradually centripetally go towards the stoma so what we want is to keep this under traction and then start pulling out this loop you know once the loop is mm, evident and bared then we'll start pulling it out we we'll pull it out and then we'll be ready to anastomose finger is showing me where the mm, uh, where the bubble is tethered to the wall so i'm just opening those strands yeah now see the bowel is released a little bit is left here yeah see yeah see so the bowel is started coming out see? just basically traction counter traction a little you know sensitivity of your finger and you can release the bowel from the these little strands one side i've been able to release it from the parietes so i'll uh, use a you know either i can use diathermy or but i have ligature privilege so i'll just enlarge the incision here similarly a little uh, extension this side because one does have to increase incision by about a centimeter i'm just releasing some mm, strands of mm, fibrous tissue which is holding the bowel against the parietes and just another uh, you know alice here one strand might be vascular so i'll take it with the lego shore and just lift it up yeah yeah one little strand here to get this loop out easily in this loop out easily now how i do it is i one can use a you know a stapler here and a stapler there and then put them together what i like to use it is a ligature it's a very wonderful instrument it almost you know closes the lumen for the while that we are at work so i'll just divide it like that and i'll divide this also similarly okay so and the mesentery also with the same 
Mahna. This entry is better to take two bites. That's the advantage of Liga Show Roll Harmonic. That you don't, I mean, the device doesn't divide the vessels. You take a decision when to divide, you know. We'll get this out a little bit more. Get this also out a little bit more. And use a stapler to fire. Join these two ends. Okay. <coughs> So I open the loop. You see, Ligasure keeps it pretty secure. There's no, you know, leakage of bowel contents during the time that I'm at work. I can use a maybe Covidian Medtronic one, or this is a Lotus stapler. It's equally good. It's Indian, and I, I'm fond of it. Now I can just hold this in my hand, and this goes in on the anti-mesenteric side. Similarly, this goes in. You see. And uh, uh, we, once the stapler cartridge is in, then we can, you know, connect the handle. It becomes easier to handle. This is how I do it. This is how I pull them up. And this is how I keep the mesentery away from the stapler line. And um, the assistant can clamp it. Come. Tighten. Yeah. So we can fire it. Okay, get it out. All right, so this is the anastomosis which is formed and uh, we'll test it that it's not bleeding by pushing in a little gauze piece. So the gauze piece goes in basically to see if it's the anastomotic line is not bleeding. It's not bleeding. In fact, I can see it also. It's not bleeding. All right. So now we can just put another stapler here and uh, job's over. We've hardly had any blood loss. This is the only, you know, sponge which we used. We've held it. This is the um, staple then. I'm just holding it this side. This side I'm folding with the finger and uh, Dr. Ajay push in the stapler. Yeah. Yes. Clamp it so from all the sides we have taken the serosa you know these babcocks were taking the serosa this side we were holding with the forceps and now fire it well you can see that this was the proximal side this is the distal side. There is no twisting, isn't it? So, like that. And so this thing is a little bit, maybe we can put one stitch here. I generally like to cover this with a, you know, Lambert suture. A bit of bleeding is there often. So whatever staplers you may use, and you feel more secure if you have covered it with your suture line so we've lamberted it we've there's no bleeding and uh, the anastomosis is good enough okay so well in a day or so whenever he passes flatus <coughs> we'll permit him orals <coughs> he's an 80 years old gentleman and i think he should be able to God willing, we'll be able to go home in a day or two. <coughs> this becomes slightly bulkier. That's why I said that we do make an incision, you know, about a centimeter this side, about a centimeter this side. Otherwise, it becomes difficult to push it back. So now if we raise it, uh, you know, it'll, image, it'll very easily go in. Just because we have enlarged the incision. All right. Things gone back. So we just put about two, three sutures here, you know, the loop ethylon. So, you know, the standard protocol about a centimeter outside the cut end. Okay, the first suture.
just like when you place a mesh it has to be five centimeters away from the defect similarly when you close a abdominal incision at least one centimeter beyond the incision you should begin your closure otherwise the chances of hernia are much more I like to wash this with a antibiotic solution I don't know what worth it is there are no meta-analysis to prove it but you know after all the commonest site of infection after all incisions is the skin infection the subcutaneous infections so better care you take the better better it is so no blood in the tissues blood is the greatest enemy blood in your tissues that's a culture medium so let it be absolutely bloodless you know that will prevent see even this much uh, blood is good enough for your infections some people ask me you know so much of views of diathermy and energy equipment you have to see that there's no blackening and uh, energy equipment if properly used really reduces infections reduces morbidity gives you wide fields to work in so take care that you do not burn tissues one or two sutures on the scapa and uh, then skin closure i always uh, share with myself and all of you my residents you see this uh, stapler is a wonderful thing it saves so much time but do not now haste make haste in putting staplers let the epidermis come in opposition with epidermis if you put it quickly what will happen is that somewhere or the other there will be inversion and if there is inversion the wound is going to open and why give that morbidity to the patient of wound infection and the stitches stitch line opening if you do it carefully it's a wonderful gadget you see there is no dog earring and there is no in, if still there is inversion i would take some stitches 30 and to avert the skin the epidermis should not come in opposition with epidermis if it's coming it is 100% going to open let the dermis come in opposition with the dermis so it's fine okay